Roll Over DJ by Jet on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. All right, Carl? Yeah. Bit miserable today, Carl. Let me explain why. Go on. Steve, and to you, the listeners. Well, we came in to a big, big bunch of stuff. Dropped off by, was it Becky from yeah. Marks and Spencer? Just like lovely stuff. Food, presents for the cat, books, just, you know, to Ricky and Steve. Ricky and Steve. Ricky and Steve who do the show, right? Ricky, Gervais and Steve Merchant. GQ presenters of the year. Creators of The yeah. Office, yeah. right? Yeah. Award winning. Carl's looking over, I go, oh, uh, so, well, maybe, oh, it's not just, not for you, no. And then, then he told me why he's grumpy anyway. Go on. Do you know what XFM are giving everyone, he's been, how long have you been here? About six years. What are you getting for Christmas from XFM? Two CDs. <laughs> 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 Is that of your choice or do they choose them? Uh, there's a list of about 30. Right. <laughs> Tell him what you chose. 30 CDs. I've gone for, uh, Kings of Leon album. Yeah. And, uh, the best of Bob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't we, like, given them away in the past or something? Or you could have burnt them off, couldn't you? You could have done copies. Illegal, but you could have done that. Mm. Anytime you wanted. Tell I, I don't it. think Bob Marley minds if you- No. The bootleg his CDs. It's out of order though, isn't it? It is bad. <laughs> Although you Is that get... always the case? Has it always been the truth of all the time you've been here? No, it has been better than this. Yeah, although you do get paid quite well and you do have an easy time. Yeah, but don't give me the CDs then. If it was a milkman, you don't go, oh, I have two bottles of semi-skimmed. Happy yeah. Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is a valid point. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Have you complained? Uh, who is it who made this decision? Oh, there's no point. No point, is there? Why? Just no point. I don't like moaning anyway, just- <laughs> <laughs> Has it come from up top? Is it yeah. like from the capital people? It's just everyone, that's what everyone gets. Yeah. And yeah, but oh, will Christian get two CDs for getting up at 4.30 every day for about five years? And keeping this station afloat. Mm. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. So, that's why I'm a bit fed up. What yeah. are you listening to first, Marley or Leon? Well, you have, uh, have a bit of, yeah, a bit of Marley. I'll tell you what Marley's good for, as well. You'll have a little beach holiday, aren't you, over Christmas, going to Lanzarote? Mm. Listening to that on the beach, you'll, you'll, you'll realise how wise XFM are in the long run. <laughs> you know, you go, well look, they could've given me 400 quid, right? Well, I'd've spent that. But this is, you know, the legend it's lives the on. It keeps on giving. So, you'll probably, you know what I mean? Think how much those, what you've got to think of is how much those, all these great songs took, not only from, from the depth of his soul and, you know, uh, uh, it, all his sort of angst and knowledge and love, and then all the studio time, the marketing, and you know, they're just giving you one that. They go, don't worry about that, Carl, he's have it. And you go, what? All the time we're spending with Bob Marley and everything in there. You go, have it, Carl, have it, have it, Carl, have it, Carl. And then, yeah, have that, have that. Thanks, thanks, well done. Carry on. We're still gonna pay you for the work. Yeah. That's just some on top. Here's a little piece of Bob, free. Yeah, so don't moan, it's extra. So, I didn't have to give you it at all. Play a record, you ungrateful little swine. Some people, like the homeless, aren't getting anything this Christmas. This is my favourite. Elvis Costello track of all time. It's Alison. This wasn't on the list. <laughs> right? <laughs> Elvis Costello? Alison on XFM 104.9. So, that's it. If, well, maybe, I'll tell you what, a good idea, Carl. Just beg, just to ask for, get asked for other things. What do you want? What do you want for Christmas? You must have a big fan base out there willing to make you things. Maybe like a little, I don't know, gloves, a pair of gloves. Just a like little hat. Do you want to send a uh, necklace in for Suzanne? That'd be handy. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's what she wants. Is Suzanne listening today? No, she's out. Right, okay, this is the dilemma. Me and C Steve, yesterday, we're trying to convince Carl that it would be a good idea to buy Suzanne a Christmas present. Mm. Okay. Now, what? Wh why aren't you going to buy a Christmas present? Explain, Carl, why you don't think you should buy a Christmas present. No, well, I've told her I'll get her one, but in the new year. We're going away on holiday and that, so yeah. there's no point taking stuff away. Yeah. We're going to Lanzarote next week. Just get something in the sales after Christmas for the, yeah. Yeah. Right. And we, me and Steve were trying to explain to Carl that she would love it if you bought her something on Christmas Day. Yeah, but she knows now. D but, Knows yeah. what? I've told her. So no, well, I'm gonna tell you, you know, right, this, dear listener, this was Carl's worry. I said, I bet she's got you something. 
and Carl was worried in case he got her something and she hadn't got him something. Yeah. He'd be livid. He didn't want to be down. He didn't want to be a present down. Yeah. <laughs> Look at his face! So buy her a nice necklace. Don't spend- just spend, spend hundred quid, you know, just a little token. We're going away. We're not taking her away on holiday. No, you're not taking her away on holiday. What, what, you're paying for it, are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> are you really? Well, half and half on that. Right. So, so you're paying for you to go on holiday? <laughs> That's good of you. So the gift is your company, really? <laughs> She's done all right. She's done all right! <laughs> Why do you talk like you're 60 years old? <laughs> and you've been working down the mines? <laughs> She's- I don't know She's done all right. Do you go over to her and say, Suzanne, you're bloody lucky. I mean- You've fallen on your feet. Look who fairly, you've got. What? I'm not sure she has done all right. <laughs> I don't want to be critical, but- <laughs> Oh, dear. So what are you going to get in the sales? What are you going to get her? Oh, it depends. Um, I'm thinking- I mean, I'll give her the choice. She can have Kingsley and all Bob Marley. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'll let her decide there. <laughs> oh, yeah. dear. Uh, th three holidays Carl's had this year, last year. Yeah, yeah. Three, yeah. I'd love to have three holidays. You've got to start putting the work no, in I there. I had two holidays, though. No, you had three holidays. You went away with, uh, Suzanne and her parents. Yeah, well, that doesn't count. It does count. If you book, if you book two weeks off the firm and you go away and you go, how was your holiday go? Well, I didn't really count, it wasn't a really good holiday. Can I have them days back, please? <laughs> yeah. Oh. My New Year's resolution is to be nicer to you, but- well, talk no, you've sense. already broken that. No, but talk sense. Talk sense. You've had three holidays this year, and I'm just saying, you, you're in your 30s now, and 30s is when you should be really putting the work in. <laughs> That's true enough. To reap the benefits in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 100. <laughs> Carl, what's your New Year resolution? What about think before you speak? <laughs> It's worth, I mean, See, I'm allowed to laugh. I'm allowed to laugh at things other people say, Carl. That one, <laughs> that is a good suggestion. How was your holiday, Carl? Uh, it was all right. Right, brilliant. <laughs> but that I don't see on the kind of on these on the ratio of uh, good to bad in Carl's mind. That might be amazing because we never it might be amazing, seen the places of anything. I'll tell you what. Can we have uh, you know a cracking little tune and then come back and hear about Carl's holiday? Oh, I'd love to do that. Let's right. keep it tight. <laughs> Blur, out of time on XFM. Well, we're not out of time. We've still got an hour left, boys. <laughs> hey! Luckily, brilliant. A lot of uh, emails, obviously, about the Chinese people, f as fascinated as we are. I don't want to discuss it, you know, interminably, Rick, because there's so much to say, and we've said most of it in the past. Yeah. Get a couple of emails. In fact, I think Carl, you told us this information. Remind me of it again. If all the Chinese people in the world were we're in a line on that, because there's loads of them, you'd never get to the end of it. Right. No, it's not that. It is it's not. no. If all the Chinese people formed a line and started walking out of China, you'd never get to the end of it. That's what I just said. No, it's because though, um, the, yeah, but that, that's, they'd, but that's... Be, they'd be having babies. Um, you know what I mean? Still, it'd be adding to it all the time, wouldn't you? But would they be? Would they be walking and jacking <laughs> and <laughs> having babies as they're walking out? Yeah, that's that is yeah. That's... I'd love to see someone organise that. Maybe the record breakers team. I tell you what, I'd love to see Ross McWhorter or Norris, whoever's- who is it? Who's the one that's alive? I forget, Norris, I think. Norris, right. I'd love to see him uh, to coordinate that. Yeah. A uh, 1.2 billion little Chinese fellas. Boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Yeah. And where are they walking out of China? Which exit are they taking? They're taking the- Through Tibet? Uh, or... I think it's the- I, I think it's the- uh, Gate 9 Slip Road, the M43, <laughs> right. to St. Petersburg, right? right? And they go, and walking, <laughs> and shagging. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because some presumably are dying as they're leaving. No, but they live to 120. That's true. So, so they cling. So, you know, well, we know Carl's theory on that. Do you yeah. want to just tell new listeners your theory about nah, when, these th th when all these Chinese people get the records for oldest people in the world? Come on, what's your theory, Carl? Carl, what? Just that they're probably lying. Why? Because... A lot of them don't age that well. Some of them do. A lot of them don't, and yeah. they always look older than they are. I read the other day, right? Do you know the one who was the oldest woman in the world, mm -hmm. right? Chinese woman, right? Yeah. Um, the way she did it, it was. <laughs> she didn't die. That was a, that was her secret. Yeah. What she did, she got up every day and didn't die. No, no, she uh, she was like <laughs> awake and that, and then she'd have two days just sleeping. Right. So she wasn't really that old. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, she'd only sort of lived half of her life in a way. Well, we so all live two-thirds of our life, don't we? 
No, but she, she was like awake and that, and then she'd go, oh, I'm out of bed. And then that'd be it for two days. It's that time again, do the jingle. Ow! Monkey you! Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a really good one. Okay, okay. good. Okay. Oh! Chimpanzee that! Monkey news, yeah! Right, do you know it's it's nearly time for the Winter Olympics again? Okay. Is it? Okay. They sort of come round every four years. Is it this year, is it? Yeah. And uh the 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 last one that happened Four years ago, yeah. There was a there was a bit of an incident. Oh no. Oh well I'd know about this then because it would be well, it'd be well, big news because it's a it's a well known televised as well. Yeah. It's, uh, do you remember any winners that were monkeys? In any of the no, tournaments? Of course not. No. no. So, yeah. no, so it's anyway, not gonna be that because it wouldn't be true. Yeah. So anyway, one one of the uh, popular events. Um Bobsleigh. <laughs> okay, right. Um, yeah. you know, it you know it works. Well, you it's need like four men. Is it four men or five four men? It's four. Yeah. It's definitely four men that you need, need on four a men. team. Is it and two and there's two team bobsleighers. But as well. they're always men. Is that right, Rick? Well, that, well yeah, that has to be. Yeah. Anyway, human, so human humans. Well, that has to be humans. Yeah, yeah it's okay. the Winter Olympics for. Yeah, so, so, so just clarify, with the Winter Olympics you can't have any animals taking part. No, and they, and they also, well no, because they, they wouldn't be allowed them to, there's no way they could disguise it because not only would they see it straight away, right, but they have blood tests. <laughs> right, okay. So, which would show up. So they definitely know if it was well, a blood test. Non it's impossible, it would be literally impossible to have anything other than a human <laughs> involved part. in a bobsleigh team. Fine, okay, so carry on. So anyway, this, this country, I don't want to name them because they try to shake off this, this sort of, you know, this bad news. Oh yeah, and you don't know. And it's it not true. Yeah. So anyway, the, the the country was doing really well in the qualifying stages. Oh yeah. But the problem was there was there was like two members mm. who were getting all like the press and stuff. Oh right, yeah. And one of them never got a look in, right? How tall was he? <laughs> anyway, so this one member was getting fed up because the the other two were getting all the press and what have you. So he said, I, I'm not happy with this. Yeah. I'm jacking it in. Oh. So they were like, you're joking. We've we've qualified. We're getting into like the main race and everything mm. you can't leave us now and he said well you could do it all on your own before you know you, you, the way you were acting like you didn't yeah. need me so i'm going mm. so they were like oh well, they, they need to replace him because there's a certain amount of people needed so uh so anyway so the clock's ticking it's getting close to the big race and everything of course it is yeah they're like what what are we going to do here the substitute what? they took with them what are they well, going to do? Yeah, they would take the substitute, so get no, him No, they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't have any of them and that, what, it's, what? you know, a lot of injuries and stuff. Or just get a mate to do it, just get a mate or a friend yeah, or, or the coach to do it, yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of responsibility on these people and, mm. you know, you won't want to let your country down and that, and they're like, what are we going to do? Get a waiter or anyway. Anyway, the time comes to the race, seems to be three people on it. There appears to be three, okay, yeah. Um, they start off, they're whizzing round the track, faster than normal, they, they're beating their old records. <laughs> right, amazing. Because the new fella they've got, a little bit smaller. Ah! Oh, right? is, so, is he in the bobsleigh or is he pushing? He's, he's in it. Oh, right. okay. Right. He's wearing a uniform and a helmet that he's we can't see. He's got a helmet on, like, he's got the kit face. on. Um, yeah. Nobody knows who he is, but the country's do. loving it. Of course they They're do. like, well, it looks like we're going to break all our records, you know. Good, it's good that they found someone new. Yeah. Bet the other fella who left is, is sort of kicking himself, thinking, oh, I could have been part of this. Anyway. This wasn't a bloke that had very short legs and long arms, was it? Anyway, what happened is, they're whizzing round the track and what have you. Faster than ever, yeah. Faster than ever, and the press are like going, beating all records here. They mm. started taking photographs. <gasps> lot of flashing. Lot of flashes from the cameras and stuff. Right, of course. Suddenly, the bobsleigh goes a bit, sort of, mental, and whizzes off, off the track, right, into like all the tyres and stuff. That they have for protective. Oh, they uh, love tyres, don't they? Bobsleigh members. <laughs> some of them you can. Some, uh, sometimes you can find them swinging in one, or maybe eating a banana. Ambulance comes rushing over and stuff. The other two members are looking pretty nervous for some reason. Mm. Oh, what are they doing? They're saying, look, um, don't take the helmet off because you know you can do more damage to the. the well, neck. don't tell the paramedics how to do it. Uh, I mean, <laughs> they know their job. Yeah, they know yeah, their yeah, job. Yeah. So they were like, just, just you know, and plus, you know, he doesn't. He, he came in at last minute to help us out. He doesn't want everyone to know who he is. He's, yeah. he's not after the limelight. Yeah. Like some of the members we used to have, but he just, yeah. he just was helping his country out. Yeah. Leave the helmet on. Anyway, they get him in the ambulance and stuff. The other two are looking a bit worried and what have you. They're oh. gutted, they lost the race. The little bloke, is the bloke not saying anything? Is he not? He's, he's in the ambulance now. Is he not saying anything though? Anyway, word got out, right, from one of the ambulance mm. drivers a few weeks down the line, once all the dust had settled on the Olympics and stuff and mm. light news day and stuff. Yeah. Uh, it was reported that one of the ambulance drivers said that, that on that, on that sort of dreadful night when, you know, the country lost out on a medal in the bobsleigh, he sort of reported that there was a monkey in the back of the ambulance. 
people were like going, ah, oh, you're joking. I don't remember you? this. I don't remember this you, at all. Not, you, well, this is it, you see, because they sort of swept it under the carpet oh, a little bit. Right. They were like, this bullshit. is crazy talk. This, this is bullshit crazy again. talk. Once talk, absolute shit. Where this did is, you get this, this from? This is crazy talk, right? It is but, crazy talk, and it's from the mouth of Carl Pilkington. And, and, but, the, but the weird thing is, that backed it up. Well, following week, um, there was a story of some people who visited the zoo, saw a chimp in a neck brace. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that's this week's monkey. Bollocks. <laughs> but we're gonna do something that we used to do on our local radio show called Rockbusters. Yeah. Sounds a bit like Blockbusters, a television programme that used to be on television where they gave sort of real cryptic clues. Yours aren't cryptic clues, yours yeah. are ridiculous. So explain Rockbusters. Um give out an initial of a artist or a band. Yeah. That are knocking about like now or ages ago, and I give a, uh, a cryptic clue. It's not a cryptic clue. Um, Very rarely cryptic. Sometimes uh, it works. Sometimes it's nonsense. But well, as as we once said, I think it is more um, accurately described a craptic clue. Yeah. Well. Or what am I thinking? Well, are you going to give an example, or will we just do them? The classic example, of course, for me is um, a woman. She's an artist. The initials are W H. She was wandering around Texas. in Texas. She fell over a part of her leg, fell in a puddle, wet knee, Houston. That is the level. That's what you're working with, people. So he's going to give three of these. The first email that gets them all right, the first email we get, and it's timed, isn't it, email, so we can know, that gets all these clues exactly right, can win, what, a, a signed photo of Carl? Now that is exclusive. There are not very many. I don't think they even exist, do they? There are no signed photos of Carl, so this will be an, a, a collector's item. Right. So, uh yeah, there's three different ones. When you send it in on email, podcast at com, just put in the subject thing like Rockbusters so I know what I'm looking for. Mm. Right then, so three three different clues for you to work on. Uh, first one. Oh, shouldn't I do a jingle for this? Please. Okay. Oh, that sounds cryptic, no, I'm rocking it and... Rockbusters. Uh, right, first one, the initial, right, is B. The right. initial B, band the B, or artist. So, band or an artist beginning with the letter B. Mm -hmm. The cryptic clue. Well, I don't want a house that's that far away from the water. I want to be right on top of it. Right? That's the cryptic clue. Well, I, I don't want a house that far away from the water. I want, I want, to, I want to be right on top of it. Right? B, artist or band. Who is it? Right? Work on that one. Second one, it's B again. B, letter B for the band of the artist. All right. Cryptic clue, right? That part of my leg is English. That's right. it, is it? Yeah. Right. That part of my leg is English. Initial B, what is it? Part of my leg is English. And then the last one, uh, KW, artist the band, and the cryptic clue, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment. What's going on there? Right, KW, the fitness, in, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment. Work on them, right? Send in the answers, podcast at rickgervais.com and uh, just win some st signed picture. And that. All right, so last week's uh, clues, there was three of them. Uh, I'll give you an initial of an artist or a band yeah. and a cryptic clue. Yeah. Uh, you work it out, you email it and you win a signed picture and that. Yeah. Um, first one was, uh, well... I don't want a house that, that far away from the water. I want to be right on top of it. Go on. Right, so that was B. Yeah. Uh, that's, you know, that, that was Beyonce. Be Beyonce. Like, yeah. It's like a cryptic thing. Do you got that? Mm. Second one. I'd stand. Beyonce. Um, Beyonce. That Beyonce. part of my leg is English. Uh, the initial was B. That was Britney. Right? Britney. Yeah, so it's like British. Brittany. But so you only take, you're just taking the one half of her name, are you now? Well, she's known as that now. Mm. I think she's known I don't more, know as, she more, is, as, but fine. more as Britney than okay. Britney Spears. They don't really call her that anymore. Mm. Yeah. Also, British isn't the same as English. Yeah, I know. I, I realised <laughs> that, but it was too late. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Brilliant. That's what you're up against. Just like that Ollie was with Millionaire. The last yeah. one was, uh, the initials were KW. Yeah. And the clue was, uh, the fitness teacher has got a speech impediment, right? So you've got to sort of think about that. You've got yeah. to think about a fitness teacher yeah. 
he's working out and that. Yeah. But he's got a speech impediment, so yeah, when yeah. it, when it, like, comes to, like, finishing... Well, no, you didn't, you didn't say all this in the clues, so. but, no, well, well, but, no. it was, it was just, that, that one was Can Kanye West, right? <laughs> Kanye so, West? So, I'm just saying, Why like, you know... Why did you to say Kanye West? Because he's got a speech impediment and he's been, he's been working them out, they've built up a sweat and he's like, right... Well, no, you want... didn't say all that, so it doesn't matter, you but don't... Anyway, but anyway, even, even if that is the case, so what is he saying that's... He's saying, all right, can we, can we West now? As in, can we rest now? Yeah, just kind of, because they say that at the end, it's like, right, everybody... So he's got a speech impediment, he's very, very camp, and he's adding words. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but apart from that, it works perfectly. <laughs> so... That is um, bollocks, you're an idiot. So that was, uh, the first three. Who and, won? Uh, what should we do next? What should we do next? It's too much. Will we, uh, get, do we need them out of the way? Get, get do we need them out of the way? Yeah, just, uh... Let's, get, uh, let's explain it again. If you're new, um, I'm sort of on a bit of a mission to find out, you know, we've got a lot of animals and insects in the world and stuff. Yeah. Um, do we need them all? <laughs> it still amuses me. <laughs> so we've found out we've got to keep jellyfish. We've done octopus. Just yeah. said we've got to keep them. This week, snails. Do we need them? Just doing some research, uh -huh. right? Um, I'm sort of working my way through different creatures and insects and stuff that's on the planet. Yeah. Right? Um, and finding out if we need them or not. Right? Yeah. Do you know much about snails? Well, um, sea snails? Well, yeah. Sea snails in general. Um, I don't know much about snails, land snails, I know a bit about sea snails, like whelks, top shells, that sort of thing. Would you say they're important? Um, what sort of sense do you mean by important? Say if we had to sort of get rid of some animals and insects and that, because we're running out of room. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because cause I'll tell you what I know about some snails. I don't know if this applies to sea snails as well. I mean, I called you today because a lot of other places are, are shut. Yeah. Right? So, um, I know um, they like to eat stamps, apparently. The glue on stamps. They right. love it. Right? Right. Um, apparently a lot of um, letters and stuff aren't getting to where they're meant to be getting because snails are crawling into... Letter boxes and eating right. the stamps. That obviously doesn't apply to the sea ones, mm. but that, that's a problem they're causing. All right. Uh, are you, were you aware of that? No. Well, get you glad you answered the phone today. Right. They love beer. Beer, yeah. Who doesn't? And also, I don't know if this is right, but I heard that they sleep for 13 years or can do. Right. I've, I wouldn't know if they can sleep for 13 years or not. But I mean, sea snails are pretty important. Yeah, they're. they're they do quite a good job in the sea, they uh, um, graze on algae, and but, they but provide food for other other animals. I mean, you can say that about any fish, you know, or any animal, why do they, why do they exist? W would you be know. upset if, you know, someone said, we're getting rid of them? Oh, yeah, yeah. You would they're, be? They're an animal, you know, I wouldn't... Forget being like favouritism and all that I get for them, right? There'll yeah. be other things knocking around you can sort of spend your time looking after. You'll still have a job, don't be worrying about that. So I'm not going to get rid of all the fish. Jellyfish need looking after, so you're safe. Yeah. But do we need them? Come on, there's loads of people saying, come on, we've got to move on through the animals, and you're holding them up saying, well, I, I want to keep them. Well, who's, who's saying we need to... That just sounds a bit, just sounds a bit crazy to me. Just, just imagine. Do you know what I mean? And, and they would come to you because you're working in an aquarium, so they'd, they'd be asking for your advice. Right. And you're slowing it down. Well, they asked my advice and I'm giving it to them, so, you know, that's what I think, anyway. Yeah, but snails, you know, I mean, like I say, they, they drink beer and that, you know. What do, what do they do apart from uh, some food for a, for a whelk? They were, they were around, their descendants around a lot longer, uh, longer than we have been. Yeah, they've been around a long time, but what have they done? Well, they survived that long, so they must be doing something pretty good. Well, apparently they sleep for 13 years, so... Really? Even though they've been around for ages? I, 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 I think that sounds a bit... I don't think they sleep for 13 years. Not all, I mean, not all of them, just, just, the, just the tired ones. So, snails, do we need them? Well, yeah, I just think they've got to, just as, you know, it's not for us to say, do we need them or not, we can't just... So, so you think we should keep them? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Oh, God! Carl, <laughs> I'm proud of you. That he was, was getting really quite annoying. I know. <laughs> what, what, did he, what did he think he was doing? What? <laughs>
<laughs> I don't know what you tell these people. I mean, you don't get their permission to play this out, do you? You well, just don't tell the thing is, right, <laughs> I, yeah, I sort of told him what it was about, but we won't say who he is or where he works, because yeah. it doesn't matter. I just needed to speak so, to someone who knows. <laughs> I know, Matt, but you were trying to get an answer out of him by suggesting that he would be <laughs> safe, because he could look after Jenny Fish if he gave the okay to destroy snails. <laughs> he was I, getting livid, you could oh. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a question. I was discussing this yesterday. I'm not, this is not a bit of shit. This is not a joke. I genuinely have always, always been slightly perplexed, and we were discussing it last night. The notion of the birds and the bees. Yeah. Now, I don't mean, you know, the birds and the bees. I no. understand how, you why, know. Why they use the birds and the bees. Yeah, because, well, you see, I always, as a child, I never, no one, I assumed the bees were having some kind of relations with the birds. No. So what's, what, is there anything to do with the birds and the bees, or is it literally, you know, just like a euphemism? It's just, oh, Wouldn't the birds and the bees. No, but they, they... Do the birds do anything with the bees? No, no, not at all. It was where parents... take them out? They it was where parents them? used to, to sidestep the issue by saying things like, you know when a lady blackbird and a, and a man blackbird, they meet, right? They make a little nest. And then because they're in love, they have an egg. Yeah. And that was it. I understand that. That makes sense. But why the bees? Why the birds and the bees? Um, well, probably, um, I don't know. I don't know. You see, within nature, forgive my ignorance, within well, nature there well, is no relationship between bees well, no, and birds, is there? No, no, not at all. No, not at Nothing's all. Nothing's going on. But probably what it was, it was, it, if the parent found it hard to say, you know, daddy puts his penis at mummy's vagina, it was much easier to say, like, in the insect world, billions of them queue up and just fill the queen with spunk for about a day. <laughs> sure. You know, <laughs> yeah, thus yeah, avoiding yeah. the embarrassing <laughs> intercourse. <laughs> exactly. That's my, what I think, Carl. What do you think? <laughs> Were you, were you talk about the birds and the bees? Did anyone bring that up with you? No, it was oh. just in that class, wasn't it? When, uh, they put a video on. <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> That's what we had. No, we had a film. And they just said, Leia, I watched that. And then, uh, What film, right. though? Basic Instinct? It was just, just like, you know, two, two people. And, uh, all sat round the telly and watched it. One girl fainted. <laughs> 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 and they said, right, that's that. Next week. You know, prisms. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and did it teach you everything you needed to know? Uh. Well, how much do you need to know? <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> <laughs> no, true. Except one kid in my class still thought a baby came out of an ass. <laughs> Afterwards, he didn't understand. <laughs> I think what they should have shown on those videos is technique as much as anything. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so, Because yeah. it was largely just instructional. Wooing. Mm. Wooing. Mm. What it didn't tell you was how to get into a position where this <laughs> might be of some interest. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been the first four weeks of the course. Yeah, well obviously that baby who had a, the, the kid who had a baby. What was going on there, Carl? That was that was your... Did you see that? Yeah, that was going to be your favourite programme, wasn't it? Yeah, it wasn't that good in the end. Well, Why? This is, you told us about this story ages ago, didn't ages you? Ages ago. I told you about, about a year ago, about a baby that had a baby. Yeah, yeah. Cause it's a bit different, the baby that had a baby, isn't it? Whereas a Siamese twin with a with a, a, a breach um, actually just, you know, developed in, inside him for, you know, just, well, it wasn't even developing. Uh, it was uh, a, a, a twin stillborn that um, just was inside, mm. enveloped in the other one's body. So it's a little bit different to a baby, what had a baby. Isn't it? Yeah. Actually disappointed he was. Mm. Do you know what he said to me? He went, well, I thought it was going to come out. And yeah. go, oh, bloody hell, I'm seven. What a waste of my life. <laughs> like, he'd been yeah. in there going, oh, hello? <laughs> yeah. Hello? <laughs> seven? <laughs> Idiot. Yeah. Yeah, a bit disappointing. But there was a programmer after that, right? <laughs> um, at ten o'clock on Discovery, and I haven't got Discovery. Oh, well, It was about... Good. Oh, I didn't see it. This oh, is it. Okay. I was going to say to people, if they've got a copy of it on tape, if they can send it in. What was it? Uh, about a baby with four legs. <laughs> right. That's, that was on, that ten on... It wasn't a puppy? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Just, <Okay>. uh... <laughs> <laughs> What's it doing up there? <laughs> yeah. It's my baby. <laughs> oh, is it mum? All right, then. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Oh, it's got four legs. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes they do. Look, four Dad's legs. gone. He's never coming back. You've yeah. got to get over it. <laughs> so, if anyone's it's got not that, a baby, send it in. Oh, right, dear. Okay, send it good. in. So you want to take with a baby with four legs? You're going to be disappointed again. It's not going to be like a baby with four legs who's running round, running up the curtains. You know what I mean? It's not going to be that. They're probably. It's probably going to be two legs and then two sort of like floppy appendages. You know what I mean? 
It's not, they're not gonna be brilliant. It's not gonna be like Jake the Peg. You're gonna be disappointed. Long and winding road. I love that, mm. but I don't like the way McCartney sings here. Uh, well, there's just one, he goes, uh, you leave me waiting here. Well, he's always got that slightly affected But it sounds style, like Richard it? Burton or something, here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's only one that does it, but mm. I don't know why. Mm. I just think he likes it or wants to go back and change it. Maybe it's like, but having said that, you know, I'm not taking the moment the Beatles, one of the best bands ever. <laughs> well, yeah, good luck Brilliant to songwriters. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we've had a lot of emails, Carl. I don't want to sort of put a damper on your Christmas, but a lot of people have been slagging off Lanzarote. One of them just said, well, one of them just, I, let me, I don't know if I can find it. It is Canaria, right. isn't it? It's Grand Canaria. It is the, the, one of the Canaries, isn't it? It's a volcanic island covered in volcanic dust. It's very windy, so you have to dig a hole to sit in on the beach, <laughs> and there's hardly anything to do. <laughs> That's from Mike Goddard, and he says, uh, unless you like quad biking. Well, you know, you've seen what happened to, uh, no, don't go quad so don't biking. Do Not with your little head. There's no protection at all. Yeah, so. I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know. At least Rick Mann and Ozzy had lots of hair. You, you, yours would you'd be like Humpty Dumpty. It would crack like a little egg. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'd see. Yeah, there's no kings or kings horses. So, yeah, yeah, well, they couldn't. They couldn't do the job anyway. No, they shouldn't remember. really send them. They're not really yeah. qualified. Horses send a, not equipped to put send a, back a an medical egg man. man like Neil Fox in. <laughs> yes. To mend but not eggs. Not some kind of military horse. I bet he's had egg on his face a few times, hasn't he? What Foxy? Yeah. yeah. Um, Most of the series of Pop Idol. <laughs> <laughs> right, Carl. Lanzarote, good or bad? Well, you got to give it a go, haven't you? Yeah, well <laughs> done. <laughs> give everywhere yeah, a go. Exactly. That's what I was saying. You know, don't just take the word for it. I mean, I mean, if it had said Nana Nova, mm. uh, Lanzarote shit, he'd have believed it. Sure. You know, if he'd have overheard it in a pub, <laughs> yeah. Lanzarote a crap, he'd have believed it. <laughs> he'd have seen it on a website mm. that was mainly concerned with monkeys and witches. <laughs> he'd have believed it. <laughs> yeah. As it yeah, is. Everybody raves about New York, and when I went there, I thought it was rubbish. Well, you're an idiot then, because yeah. that is the, the possibly though, the greatest it? city subjective. in the world, along with London. Subjective, though. That's why they have holiday programmes and that, innit? So you see it and you decide for yourself and that. Yeah, but you saw, um, Venice on a holiday programme, as you put it. You went there and you went, it was rubbish, full of black bin liners. Well, it is. Right. Didn't they it, show them? It stunk. Didn't Judith Chalmers say that? Uh, oh, it stinks here, and there's loads of rubbish everywhere. No, she didn't. Did she mention that? No. Oh, that's what I mean. <laughs> so it depends what you want from holiday, doesn't it? Well, yeah. But so... You're an idiot if you don't like New York, so next. Anyway, come on, don't, come break up, guys. Kiss and make up. No blue sky, the thorns. That's beautiful, isn't it? On XFM 104.9. Carl, you're losing your rag a little bit. What's the matter? Nothing, go on. See. What's the matter? No, what's well, the matter I've got girl? something to cheer him up. Someone's okay. emailed in, Emma's emailed in, she said that, um, <laughs> for those that know, those in the know, they referred to Lanzarote as <laughs> Lanzagrotti. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> oh, well. He's a bit up. He's got two CDs for Christmas from a company that he's been with for six years. Mm. He's a little, little bit grumpy about having to answer the phones. Yeah, he wouldn't go and make Steve another cup of tea immediately. <laughs> Selfish. Yeah. Carl, what are you thinking? Snow Patrol and Run on XFM. Wow. Nearly your last show, Carl, for about three weeks. Yeah. Carl's off to Lanzarote. <laughs> uh, <laughs> next week. Uh, we're doing it with Ian Canfield next Saturday. Then we're off, because it's day after Boxing Day, isn't it? Or 20, yeah. And then, um, we're back on the third, I think, aren't we, all together? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, what have you got? I think we should have done something like some roundups, like Cheeky Freak of the Week. We could have done Cheeky Freak of the Year. What's your Freak of the Year, Carl, if I put it to you? What, out of all the ones that I found out about? Yeah, all the ones that have ever been, yeah. Well, no, you have the Elephant Man in there that you found out about at the end of the 19th century. <laughs> Go on. Um, watch the Elephant Man again last week. Good. Good. Yeah, I loved it. Um, probably that one, uh, the kid who was like, like seven, but aged to about 38. That was pretty weird. That amazed me. That sort of no, blew me she mind. Was about, no, it was worse than that. She was about 90 or so, wasn't she? She is now. <laughs> but, but back then. Oh, oh, a couple of months ago she was 38, yeah. but because of the ageing. She's, she's sort of aged fast and that. Yeah. And it's really, uh, This is the one that you think should be allowed to get fags and beer and off-licence because she's got the body of a 90-year-old. Well, yeah, it's only fair, isn't it? <laughs> Let her have a decent life. Even though she's six? 
if she wants a packet of fags, the doctor said, you know, you're older than that. Even though you're six, you are sort of 72. If she wants a packet of fags, let them have them. She was 72 September, wasn't she? Yeah. So, yeah. But it was that, that's probably Do you actually the think that would be a good idea to have a, to give a six-year-old with an aging disease a packet of fags that's and a, what they and want, a, If that's a, what they want. And a pint of tenants. All the stress and that she goes through. It was saying something about how she has to have a passport picture done every three months or something. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Wow. That's what she's dealing with. So that, that was probably the way. Could we just say that Carl doesn't take the mickey out of these freaks? No. Of these people. He- I just, you know, it's things that fascinate me at mm. the end of the day. Yeah. Things like that are weird. Um, and things that, I mean, there's certain things that people get excited about that I think, well, what are you getting excited for? Like what? Um, News, just news. Do you know I normally do the headlines and that? Yeah. Uh, Have we got any headlines? Not really, because there isn't that much going on. Isn't that, there? This is what annoyed me, though. There was something <laughs> about a woman who's going up Everest on a bike. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And they were like, oh, brilliant. But I don't think that's that good. When someone's done it walking, where would, the, where, would the woman, where would the woman who complained about you come in the years chart? That's what do you the, mean? Yeah, that's the woman with the enormous head. Lest we forget. Yeah. She took offence to some of the comments you made on the show, and rightly so. I can't, yeah, yeah, I can't understand. Understand. I, was, yeah. I was out of order, and, you know, so I'm sorry about that. Yeah, well, yeah, well, I'll just uh, explain again that Carl, I mean, it was a, it was a, it's, the Freak of the Week is sort of like more of a punchy catchphrase than, than a derogatory term, mm. in, uh, and Carl's fascination and childlike, I mean, I think we'd have to include Carl in the roundup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he'd be certainly well, be in the, the top ten. I think the fact that she didn't sort of pursue any official complaints means that, you know, she's a bigger person than you, Carl. Yeah, really, because, you know... Certainly, you know... Well, you know, so... <coughs> <laughs> headwise. <laughs> she is. Um, Carl, you're gonna do some news stories, on. Well, the, the, like I said, there hasn't been that much going on. There's a Go story on. about a fella who, uh, hasn't eaten for 70 years. <laughs> Right. Uh, he hasn't eaten, is that all the, that's all the information you're gonna give us? Yeah, hasn't okay. eaten for 70 years, uh, hasn't had a drink, but he's alright. <laughs> well, that's rubbish then, next. It's not rubbish. Yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, next. Well, what, well, what is it, how is that? How has a man not eaten or drunk for 70 years? It's that thing, innit, your, your belly gets used to it or something. <laughs> Steve, as he... Misinterpreted it or is it rubbish? It, well, it does, to be honest with you, it doesn't actually offer any explanation. It just says that it, that's what happened. Right, it's that rubbish. It doesn't go on to Next. anything else. Um, a woman's had six organs transplanted. Um, woman needed a new kidney, a new heart, a new stomach, a new liver, a uh, new kidney, intestine. Does that mean that she's the same woman? I know. Yeah. <laughs> You'd yeah. just say forget it, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't you, though? <laughs> well, not really. You know, the organ is just a, a lump of tissue. If, if, you're you're that, if you're that knackered, call it a day. Uh, <laughs> and don't waste time with that. Yeah, and, good, uh, good there's advice. A woman, there's a woman who, um, who hasn't slept for eight years as well. Well, that's, that's impossible. <laughs> Again, you want to see that, Steve? Yeah. That's, that's, that's the news for the week. Yeah, all oh, rubbish. Turn Next. Next. Do you want to apologise once more for anyone you might have offended over the year? Yeah, you, I, like I say, I always, I never well, upset anyone. We're no, just it's, just, about just, stuff it's just chatting, it's, it's from the heart. You see someone, you say, oh, it looks a bit like so-and-so, or isn't it a bit, you're not really, you know, you no. don't really try and uh, hurt anyone's feelings, do you? But I think, I think most people know that. And I mean, I, and I've got to apologise for laughing at anything you say. I actually can't help it. Again, it's not vindictive, but when Carl comes out with some of the things he says, I, I mean, I, it's impossible for me not to laugh or react. So, uh, have a Merry Christmas, everyone. Well, before that, Rick, is there some final, um, for the year, monkey news? Tell you what, let's play a, a good song. Okay. Right, we'll have a bit of monkey news, and then that's it. A All bit right. of Amy Mann, then. Perfect. Yep. Brilliant, this one. I love the fact that he was fascinated by the strangest village in Britain, but the stories he's told us about where he comes from, there's him going around with two fellows with big heads, webbed feet, a little pigeon-chested bloke, uh, him on his grifter with Maggie pecking at him, his dad in the telephone box nicking groceries and a horse in the house next door. <laughs> I mean, how strange was his upbringing? Yeah. And him hanging from his satchel. Uh, uh, unbelievable. There's another Shufri. woman who I remembered. Actually, I'll tell you later. Go on, right. what? No, 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 I'll tell you, tell you later about another woman who I remembered. What is this? Give, give, us a, give, I, a, give us a teaser. It's just a woman who rode around on a three-wheeled bike with her husband in a basket. <laughs> right, I'll tell you later. <laughs>
Right. And, and the final, the you final clip. Just like that. No, the radio that's section. the head of a funeral service. Oh. Right, listen. <laughs> <laughs> right, tell us about this woman. Well, it was just because you were saying about the, you know, our, our living. We are broadcasting now, aren't we? This is actually going out, this is live. This isn't us sort of like... Yeah, but you, you were just talking about how I lived in an odd village. Yeah. With kids with big heads and all that, right? And what I wanted to do. What is that again? The, there's two kids with big heads. Yeah, they, they just had sort of big heads and, uh, webbed hands and that. They went to the school. And, uh, I, when I spoke to my dad the other day, because I'm going to, I'm going to see my mum and dad tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So I said, oh, have, have we got any school, sort of school photographs with the, uh, big-headed kids in? <laughs> and he said, no, no, nobody bought, bought those sort of school photos, because, because they were in it, so it was always a bit ruined. <laughs> but I said, well... <laughs> no! No, he said, he said sales would, you know, because he obviously talked to other dads and stuff like that. And he just said, oh, no one, no one bought them. But anyway, so, I would uh, love them! Yeah. That's why I'd buy them. Yeah, but I wouldn't stand out, would I? If I'd have a piece. Well, yeah, well, uh, well. Mm. Um, so, but anyway, so I was talking about, you know... When you say they had big heads, what do you mean? Do they look like someone from Doctor Who? They were just quite, quite big. But they weren't related? No. So why did two blokes with big heads and webbed feet? I lived in a weird area. There was a was sort of a a chemical plant close by. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've never told us that before. That explains a lot. <laughs> Not just the freaks in your neighbourhood, but no, well, there, was weird, there was loads of weird stuff going on. Uh, there was this, like I said, there was this woman who uh, used to like live in one of the council flats, right? And. Uh, she had a three-wheeled, sort of big, what do you call son. it? Son. <laughs> three-wheeled son. <laughs> he was the weirdest bloke we ever knew. Well, he got it, like a big tricycle, tricycle but for, a la for an adult rather than one for a kid. It yeah. was a big one. It wasn't a motorbike though, it was a No, 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 it was a push bike thing. Right. Yeah. And she used to, uh, sort of ride down the road with a fella sat in the basket on the back <laughs> with his, like, legs dangling over and they'd be going to, like, the, like, the pub and what have you. Was it a different fella each time or the same one? <laughs> yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, this sort of bald headed fella. So it was in collection for like organs and things. And oh. Bring out your ill. <laughs> and then uh, just people just throw Grandad just in the back and go, yeah. like, we're getting four quid for Grandad. But, but, but she's got a lovely pair of testicles on him. They're she, very low, but they're extremely. Bring out your dead or nearly dead. <laughs> <laughs> she used to uh, pick on her husband quite a lot. They'd be in the pub and what have you, and they'd be sat by themselves, but. She'd always be sort of, you know, having a go at him, moaning at him, sort of pushing him about and that. Mm -hmm. So my dad and his mate, right, uh, they went round to their house, knocked on the door, she answered, and he said he, he said he was a copper, right? He said, you know, Detective uh, Pilkington, gonna come in and have a word. Sorry, I'm just gonna make a note of impersonating <laughs> a police officer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but for, for, for the good, he went in and sort of said, now, I've heard, <laughs> still be here, here. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard, you know, you're picking on your husband a lot. Yeah. We'll be keeping an eye on you. Do it again, and uh, there'll be trouble. And she backed off after that. She That's was all good. right. And how was the husband? Did, did he, did, was he still in the basket though? Was he allowed to ever sort of like ride up front with her? Or was he just always no, in the No, he just, uh, she'd sort of stop picking on him in, in public places and stuff That's like that. That's good. Just you to can't, do you can't get done, can you, just for doing that? Uh, I think impersonating a police officer Well, you probably did, there, there was no gain. Um, I, I think you can't impersonate a police officer full stop, but I think they'd probably be lenient on him that he was, uh, you know. But let's, let's face it, he's, you know, he's, he's not gonna be caught, cos why would anyone know about it? It's not like his son's gonna say it on a, on a radio station, is it? And stitch him right up. Did he, is this something he did generally? Kind of a little bit of like vigilante work? <laughs> just whatever, him and his mate, just, you know, if they saw something going on, they go, what can we do? Sure. What little scam can we do or whatever? <laughs> That's fantastic! But, that uh, is brilliant! Right, okay, um, coming up, Knob News. And Monkey News. And Monkey News. And the answers to Rockbusters. What a show. I'm not sure of what I see. Let Me Tear Us Apart by Joy Division. Now, I can't put my finger on it, but that doesn't sound like the original. And no. it's off a compilation. It sounded a bit fast. I think the vocal was slightly different. If anyone can, you know, put me out of misery, I, I think it might be in a session of the time or something. Carl, this is a little New Year resolution for you, another one. Uh, maybe when we ask you to get a song, get the original uh, single version. I could be and wrong, not some but, obscure uh, but. session. Yeah, it does seem different, doesn't it? Very odd. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we just remember it wrongly. Mm. But anyway, that's XFM for you.
104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkerton. Carl, you went to Lanzarote. Yeah. People said don't go to Lanzarote. They told you it was Lanzarote. They told you were they right or wrong? They were right, yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's a bit ropey, yeah. Is it why? Just, uh, now up there. <laughs> if it wasn't for the, for the volcano they had, they'd be knackered. <laughs> That's their that's their big draw, is that's, it? That's it, basically. That's all they've got going for them. When you landed, was it really hot? Did you initially were you quite excited? You were thinking this no, is it okay. It was warm. It was, you know, we can't complain about the weather. The weather, weather was all right. Sure. You know what I mean? That's what I went for. But it'd be nice if if there just was something else. Yeah. What did you do all day then? Did you read your ritual book? Uh, no, I didn't. Didn't read that. I read that book. Do you know the book that I bought and all the chapters were messed up? Oh yeah. But I, I bought a better version of that. All right. And I read that. Excellent. And then, uh... Did it make more sense, in order? Yeah, a lot easier to follow. Yeah. And then we went, went and had a look at the volcanoes and that. They've got 36 of them to look at. <laughs> How many did you look at before you realised that you, you know, pretty much, you've seen one volcano, you've seen them all? Probably about six or seven. Really? Yeah. And then when you got to the eight, you thought, now I know what this is going to be, Suzanne. This is going to be like a mountain with a hole in the top. Yeah. Really? But it happened years ago as well. It's like, just keep a couple, fill the rest in, tidy it up. <laughs> fill the oh. rest in! Yeah, no, yeah. While well, getting some builders. No, seriously though. Okay, four million trap. tons of concrete, please. They're an absolute death trap. <laughs> yeah, what, well, yeah. What do you mean, fill them in? Do you know what a volcano is? It's just a hole, isn't it? That's happened. Well, it's it more than the hole. It's more a portal to the magma in the centre of the earth. Back in 1730 it happened, and they still haven't sorted it out. Well, when you say it happened, Volcanoes were made a lot longer ago no, no, no. than 1730. No, but, but the one that did Lanzarote in. Right. Sort it out. What do you suggest? Well, can How can they up? fill it in? It's joined, it's all joined. No, but what I'm and saying the, is- uh, it was The a, big it was, plates of the earth are all joined, all the magma's joined. With the, with the trade centre thing, that happened, they cleaned it up, sorted it out, they've moved on. That's what I'm saying. Whereas Lanzarote have just gone, leave it. It happened back in no, 1730. you misunderstand me. How, in the name of God, can you fill in a volcano, you ignorant twit? No, but it's not just the, the holes, they've actually left the lava everywhere. That's what I mean. It's not just the big holes, there's lava everywhere. But, it's m molten rock. They can't just p pick it up like they're, like a carpet. Put it in the holes, the holes are there ready, just push it all in. <laughs> <laughs> That's what ah! I'm saying. Oh. So, uh, what, um... What exactly is there then? Is it just a kind of moon-like kind of surround with just kind of dust and rocks? That's exactly- and... what, you see, I was there when the Mars thing all went wrong. Yeah. I would have just sent a camera crew there, <laughs> filmed a bit of that, <laughs> right, yeah. and say, here we are, this yeah. is it. Yeah. Ignore the little coffee shop in the background, yeah. right? <laughs> this is Mars, because that's- that's where it's like, just loads of dust, yeah. uh, holes everywhere. <laughs> Tidy it up. Anything little little round-headed aliens yeah, complaining. Yeah. Whinging. Just, just like Mars. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... So, is any- what's the best bit about the holiday? Come on, pretend you're Judith Chalmers. I have been doing. I would have done all that, I would have said that. Don't bother. Right. That mini hotel was good. Yeah? That was alright. What uh, was that like? It's alright. Just, you know, clean. That's all you want, isn't it? See, that's not quite what Judith Chalmers does. She doesn't go, what's the hotel like? All right, yeah, clean, isn't it? All right. But what was it like? Was it, what, what was it? Three star? Four star? Did that have a swimming pool? What was yeah, the room I'd, like? Yeah, I had a swimming pool and that. Yeah? Um, yeah, it's good. <laughs> if, you know, I think it was one of the better ones on the island. Okay. Um. Nightlife? Uh, Clubs, wasn't really, bars? wasn't really any, there was a bar, there was some bands playing. Yeah. Uh, not very good. Um, food. Food got a bit boring. Yeah. It was always the same food every night, but they sort of themed it and made out as if it was different. So, like, on Mexican night, it'd be chicken with a nacho on it. <laughs> right. Right. And Chinese night, sort of chicken with a little prawn cracker on it and stuff. <laughs> sure. But that got a bit boring. Um, that's me just turning on my phone, uh, cos I want to read to you a text. Right. That I got from Carl. I think you've sort of set up the holiday in in this text, don't you? Do you remember I it? I can't remember. Let's have a look. Let's have a little look. Let's go to what it. did uh, Suzanne and your girlfriend make of it? Uh, Similar view to you? That they should fill in the, uh, the holes? Yeah, it's just that thing, you see, I went on a coach trip, right, and you go and see the volcanoes. Like I say, there's 36 of them. Yeah. Um, which, you know, how many do you need? And, and when, when we're on the coach going round all these volcanoes, 
the fella on the front's going and uh, look out your left window at the moment and there's a there's a volcano and uh, if you quickly look out of the the right hand side there there's, a, there's another one <laughs> right and on the left it's just like all right we've seen it <laughs> sure do you know what i mean yeah and that yeah. that tri i mean we'll talk about that trip in a bit right this is the text i got from carl right all right been up to a volcano been in some den art dead artist's house who built his house in the lava they said they would show me science with volcanoes but all they did was chuck some water in a in a hole and it shot up in the air no dwarves in the canteen no scousers here but there is a swede woman with a big head she looks effing gormless with a cap on <laughs> all right so a little reference there to a swede woman what's, what's that mean do you mean swedish yeah or she looked like a vegetable uh, a, a uh, swedish woman mm. but they've all got sort of quite big bill aren't they and Sweet. I sent I sent him a text. Oh well, it's just good to be on holiday because you know I'm working. Uh, he sent back. So am I. Just been watching Sky News. There is a school for monkeys who want to get a band together. <laughs> <laughs> is that monkey news for later? Oh My Corazon by Tim Burgess. I can't get enough of that. I love that chorus. Mm -hmm. On XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant and little Carl Pilkington. But it was a nice holiday. Yeah, it's alright. It's just, uh, you know, I went there to relax and that. Exactly. Did a little bit of that. Uh, trying to think of some new, you know, features and stuff. Sure, always working, always working. Um, Three holidays a year, Jesus. Oh, I don't really think oh, much. It's all but, uh, holidays, one, really. one big sort of like work thing to me and Steve. Yeah. Holidays, isn't it? Yeah. Work hard, you need the holidays. Uh, so, yeah, the, the the things that annoyed me was like, you, you get bored sat around the pool after a couple of days. I'd read my book. Yeah. Uh, you know, there wasn't much going on on the. Not even any crabs thing. to throw sand that was No there? crabs or anything. They wouldn't mm. bother with Lanzarote, right? <laughs> so, uh, decided to go on a little, little trip. That's when I saw the. The volcanoes and that, 36 of them. Uh, so, we go on the trip, and the thing that annoys me, it does happen every holiday that you go on, if you go on a sort of package thing, mm -hmm. you have these trips, right, and you pay about 40 odd quid and they give you some wine to sort of make it feel like you, you're getting your money's worth. But, uh How many of these trips have you been on then? Uh Loads. Ooh, probably about 12. Four. More holidays than I've had, go on. Uh, I'll, uh yeah, so anyway, on. so you're on the, on the coach, right, and they take you, for the volcanoes, they took us in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Right? There's nothing else around there. Sure. It's, it like, like I say, it's like Mars, <laughs> but with holes in the ground. Yeah. Right? And, uh, they sort of drop you off, and they go, right, everybody, uh, see you back here in an hour. Uh, there's loads of volcanoes for you to look at, uh, and a coffee shop over there, and you know for a fact, right, you don't need an hour there. You could just say, well, just keep the engine running because <laughs> I'll have a look in this hole, we'll get back on, give us five yeah. minutes. <laughs> <laughs> don't need an hour. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know that they've got something going on. It's a backhander, it. definitely. What, with the coffee shop? Definitely, definitely, definitely yeah. They, 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 yeah, they, they go there and uh, they get everyone to have an ice cream and a coffee and yeah. they, they, you know, they sit down and have a fag talking to the bloke. Yeah, yeah and it's like, yeah, cousin. Yeah. Have you How ever? much was the coffee? Was it probably, about, probably about three... Uh, each euro, so I think it was three fifty. Sure. Yeah. Which yeah, is, yeah. I don't know, what, that's about two and a half quid. Yeah, they stitched you up. Well, I remember we were on a, was a family trip to France once, we went to Paris. We got a coach coming back from Paris to one of the ferries, one of the ports, Calais or wherever it was. Coach trip, it was quite a long coach trip. And at one point we were thinking, this is, oh, we're on the motorway, this is fine, we're making good progress. Suddenly we came off the motorway, we must have gone like 40 minutes out of our way, end up in this street, this street, completely empty, little French town. And uh, it's pipe outside this, what appears to be a restaurant, and a guy jumps on, dressed like a butlin's red coat. He's French, but he's putting on a kind of English accent. He goes, hello, oh, thank you very much, top of the morning, good morning, hello. Um, uh, come in, we've got food, drink, eh, go upstairs, we've got rooms if you want to have a rest, eh, or play around. No, it's up to you. And uh, we all had to funnel off this thing into this restaurant, and this one family went, well, we don't want to go in the restaurant. We brought sandwiches, we just want to get to the port, we're not interested. And they said, well, you've got to come in the restaurant. And went, well, we don't <laughs> want to come in the restaurant. So the guy said, well, I'll have to lock you in the coach. So this family 
were locked in the coach while we all traipsed off in, and I could just look, but I looked back and just saw this little kid with his, fi with his face pressed up against the glass. <laughs> hey, I want to go in the restaurant. They were just stuck in there, look, I mean, absolutely livid, as you would be. But and, um, that, that's definitely a backhander. But we went inside, and it was extraordinary, because initially you had to pass through a souvenir shop yeah. to get into the <laughs> restaurant, Perfect. and he just, he obviously, it was catered entirely to English tourists, so there was, like, pictures of the Queen and Prince Charles on the wall. It was done out in a kind of mock Tudor style. It's absolutely extraordinary. I mean, I, I, it's just, it was almost, it was so bizarre, because it was so out of the way. Did it come, did that come before the coach, uh, sort of scam, or did the coach guy, he knows it, is he a brother of his? I don't know how those things come about, but, um... But, yeah, that is, 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 yeah. Do we do, is that going on in this country, yeah, with French sure and German tourists? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Is it? Yeah, they say, I, I, yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure people say, look, look, if you bring 30 people to this restaurant, I'll see you all right. But it would, wouldn't it? If you know you got your favourites, because you don't have to. The, the, the coach driver's pretty much god on those things, because those people don't know where they're going anyway. Yeah, but at least here, there's all the stuff around. You don't really get that in the middle of nowhere situation in this. Country. Well, not really. Not if you're going from uh, 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 London to Manchester, you could stop off anywhere. They don't know where they are. It, you, you know, there's oh, there's places with nothing to do or see. It's that, well, there's, there's attractions, they're all, there's loads of them in America, but there's a, there's a few here, like, you know, Sheep World, <laughs> and, uh, you know, you go out to Gloucester, and there's a town, it's got the biggest cotton reel in the world, and there's, that's it, it's a tourist <laughs> yeah, shop, a big cotton yeah. reel, and some bloke at the gate going, it's a quid to see it. There it is, all right. I went to, um, mm. I know it's quite a big, I went to a Shire Horse Centre once. Yeah. But, I, when did Shire Horses become so... So popular that they got their own theme parks. Well, there's, I think I there's, mean, I think there's a museum for everything. Yeah, possibly so. I, I, I mean, I don't think you, you could, you could think of something that didn't have a museum somewhere in Britain because obviously museums start off sometimes by fans. But this so, is, do people keep coming around going? I hear you got a Shire horse. I'd love to see it. Yeah, well, I can't, people coming all the time to see my Shire. You should horses. get another one because I'd probably pay double. <laughs> I pay good money to see your Shire horse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Shire horses. <laughs> no. Have you seen them? They don't do anything. They're not like monkeys. No, they're, they're not like monkeys. No. Creatures, but you look but, at them in a picture or look at them in real life, pretty much the same thing. They're not doing anything. If they could train a, a, a shire horse to swing on a rope and masturbate, <laughs> exactly. I'd pay double. You'd pay good money. I'd pay double for that. Yeah. There's a museum in Italy when, when we went there a couple of years back. Suzanne had like, one of those little guide things. Museum there just for spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, open a restaurant. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? was it interesting spaghetti, spaghetti in different shapes. No, I didn't go. I went to see a big hole in the ground. <laughs> sure. Can't get enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, uh, but uh, out of ten, then um, what? What would you give it out of ten? Uh, all in all, food, degree. food, location, right. relaxation. You know, enjoyment. Yeah, that's, that's six. Okay, brilliant. six. Yeah. Next week, where are you going next week? <laughs> <laughs> You're not on holiday next week. Uh, cool. Go away with Suzanne's mum and dad again. If Five holidays. Play a record. That. You've got to put some work in. You're in your thirties now. You've got to knuckle down. <laughs>